Here is a very important question related to areas of triangles, and it comes up very frequently in numerical calculations. It is to find the area of a triangle given the Cartesian coordinates of its vertices. And yes, you could answer this question by using Heron's formula, which gives this area in terms of the lengths of the three sides. But linear algebra and determinants offer a far more elegant solution. In order to see this problem as a problem in linear algebra, we should imagine three vectors coming from the origin to each one of these vertices. We might call these vectors a1, a2, and a3. And you must also imagine the appropriate Cartesian basis so that these coordinates now become the components of these three vectors with respect to that Cartesian basis. Now, I won't draw any of that because it'll make the picture too messy, but that's what you should visualize at least initially. And now the question is, what's the area of the triangle given by the tips of three vectors in the plane. And we know how to calculate areas of triangles given by vectors, but only if one of the vertices, let's say this one, is at the origin. And the triangle is essentially given by two vectors coming from the origin, representing its two sides. So what's a natural thing to do here? Well, it would be simply to translate this triangle back to the origin, so we can use what we already know. And let's agree to translate this vertex right to the origin. How do we do this algebraically? Well, algebraically, this translation can be carried out by subtracting a1, the vector pointing to this vertex right here, from each of the other vertices. And that would, of course, bring this one to a1 minus a1, in other words, right to the origin. This one will end up at a2 minus a1, and that vector, a2 minus a1, now represents the side of the triangle. And this would end up at a3 minus a1, and that would be the other side of the triangle. In other words, we'll find ourselves in this situation. And now we can draw in those vectors right here. And you would, I think you would agree with me that their components are x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. That's the components of this one right here. And this one will be x3 minus x1 and y3 minus y1. And that's the components of this vector right here. And again, we agree that this vector is first and this vector is second, so that the area comes out positive. Now, this problem, we already know how to solve. We simply have to evaluate half the determinant of the matrix whose columns are these components. Now, because of what's coming, instead of columns, we will use rows, which gives an equivalent answer by the transpose property. So now, let me simply write down the answer. What I will do is write these components as rows of this matrix, and that will give us the right expression for the area. And that would be almost the final answer, except we'll be able to improve its aesthetic appearance. Here we go. All right, this is the answer, and it's actually the right answer. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. We did solve, we did reach our goal, which, which was to find an expression for the area of the triangle given the Cartesian, Cartesian coordinates of its vertices. And here is that expression. So it solves the problem. However, it is slightly inelegant because it breaks the symmetry between the th among the three vertices. In the initial question, the three vertices were completely equal. A1, A2, and A3. Not one of them was elevated over the other two. But this expression makes one of them special. And even though by the time you evaluate this determinant and write out the expression, the symmetry is restored. At this point, the symmetry is broken and there's an urge to improve it. And here's how it can be improved. Instead of evaluating this two by two determinant, I will write down a three by three determinant that preserves the symmetry between these three vertices. And then we'll simply observe that this determinant evaluates to the exact same number as this determinant. Here we go. 
All right, here is that determinant. Before anything else, I think you should agree with me that this determinant is aesthetically more appealing than this one for that very reason. It preserves the symmetry among the three points. Now, why does this determinant actually equal this one? Well, we're in the perfect position to answer this question because we know that determinants are preserved under a particular operation of Gauss elimination, namely adding a multiple of one row to another. So let's perform these two steps of Gaussian elimination and use this one as a pivot and eliminate this one and this one. Now once again, I'm not going to do it, but I think that this is a simple enough expression that you can imagine perfectly well what we will end up with. So we'll end up with two zeros here, and then in these two locations we'll have x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1, and here in these two entries we'll have x3 minus x1 and y3 minus y1. In other words, this submatrix right here will be this very matrix. And we know that the determinant of the resulting 3 by 3 matrix with two zeros here will be 1 times this determinant. So there you go. This 3 by 3 determinant equals this determinant, but it is much more elegant. And not only that, in neighboring numerical applications, you will find that this matrix is actually very useful. There is a technique known as finite element method, where this matrix comes up and figures in a very prominent way. One of its functions is to give the area of the triangle, but it has very many other functions as well. And the final note is that this approach not only works for areas of triangles, but also for volumes of tetrahedra, whose four vertices are given by its Cartesian coordinates. In which case, instead of this 3 by 3 matrix, you would write down a 4 by 4 matrix with ones in the first column, and the three, and excuse me, the four sets of coordinates as rows. Except remember to put one sixth in front of that determinant instead of one half. And that will be the signed area of the tetrahedron. Okay? So that's yet another application of determinants to areas and volumes.